Good everyone. Good day, good morning, good afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to another Microsoft Excel section brought to you by your research. For today's section, we'll be taking big data in Excel, which is being brought to you by Team Money. So your research, your research is a registered Microsoft Excel consultant, financial modeling, business intelligence, data analysis, and enterprise solution firm in Nigeria. We specialize in helping companies and high value professionals be on top of that business data. So as you all know, we're also a training firm based here in Lagos. So this is our calendar for our upcoming training. So on the 30th of April, we have advanced financial modeler and also a masterclass with a mock exam. Also on the 1st to 2nd of May, we also have advanced financial modeler with also a mock exam. So I'll give you a brief description about myself. So Temi Diamond is a Microsoft Certified Data Analyst Associate. We specialize in business intelligence and data analysis with combined two years experience. He's also a Microsoft Certified Trainer with passion of sharing knowledge and helping, and helping and mentoring young ones in data. He also developed custom solution in Microsoft Office. He enjoys creating educative content for your business YouTube channel and other platform. You can also find it on Microsoft Forum. He enjoys writing codes and also automate different business process using Microsoft Power Automate. So you can follow Temida your own LinkedIn, Twitter, and GitHub. So no further ado, I will just start a section. So let me just escape this. I will stop sharing my screen for a minute. Okay. So let me share my entire screen now. So I minimize this. So open my Excel. Let's search for big data. So for some of you now, today was, our today's session is being based on big data in Excel, right? So I'll start by the definition of data. So data is any set of character that can be gathered or translated for the analysis purpose. These are usually information that are usually stored and they can be used for further analysis or further purpose in future. So the whole concept of big data. So big data is a collection of data that are usually used in volume and yet grows exponentially with time. It is a data that is so large and complex that your traditional data management who won't be able to store or process it efficiently. So that's what we call business. So when you talk about our traditional um, analysis tool, like Excel, like normal Python, it won't really process it well. That's why we call the concept big data comes from. So let's just say some examples of big data. We have the, some companies that actually use big data itself. We have the NYSE, that's the New York Stock Exchange. So it's actually said that the New York Stock Exchange generates over one terabyte of trade data per day. So our companies like Amazon, like Facebook, all the stock, all the trade, all the forex trade that has been done daily usually amounts to one terabyte. Also in social media, statistics shows that over 500 plus terabytes of data gets ingested to the database of social media sites such as Facebook. And most time, these data are usually gotten from photos, voice notes, messages, and videos. So Facebook generates over 500 million terabytes of data. That's just tell how much data, that's how it does give you a bigger picture of the whole big data in general. So I'll explain types of big data now. So types of big data, we have the structured data. Most of the time you can call it re 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 um, relational data. So these are any data that can be stored, accessed, and processed in a fixed or tabular format. Most times they are called structured data. Usually they're like, these are data that you find most times in your MySQL, in your PostGrid, in Microsoft SQL, any data that has to be like, they're usually flat files. They, they, they call them most times, they call them a structured data. What's up on structured data? Any data with unknown form are classified as unstructured, are, are, are classified as unstructured data, such as your Google search. When, remember, whenever you search on Google, it brings out random information for you. So those kind of data are usually unstructured data. They, are, they don't have, they do have equal columns and rows. So when you talk about structured data, the data is usually have equal columns and rows itself. So for structured data, these are data that without equal columns and rows. So they're usually unspecified, they're usually unfixed. So also have the semi-structured data. They con these, usually, these data contain both form. They're usually, they can usually, you can call them, they con usually contain the two form of either structured and unstructured. So it's more like combination of both structures. 
data and your unstructured data together. So an example of this kind of data are usually your XML data. So types of XML data are usually your um, HTML. So for those that code, that write HTML, that build website, they're usually called unstructured data. So I just let me just scroll down a little bit. So characteristics of big data itself. Let me check up. It's no question so far. Okay, no question. So characteristics of big data itself. So some of the characteristics of big data is the volume. So the name from the name big data itself, it tells you that it actually has a lot of volume. So the data capacity are usually high. So it has humongous amount of data. So it usually comes with big volumes itself. So it's variety. So when you talk about variety, you talk about the heterogeneous nature. So heterogeneous nature means it has, it's more like the semi-structure. So it has two nature, both structured and unstructured itself. Also talk about velocity. So big data itself has high speed data flow itself. So it's usually used in, when you talk about velocity, things like um, IoT now, if you have things like sensors, like most companies that use IoT, they usually work with big data. So it has a lot of speed, a lot of velocity in itself. And also variety has to do with the inconsistency of the data. So I'll just go to advantage of big data. So some of the advantages of big data is usually we use it in business processing all at once. So when we talk about the business processing, we use big data in business processing. Also improve customer services. So we usually use big data to improve customer services. So co companies like Google Analytics or Google BigQuery itself or Facebook now, Facebook Analytics, they use a lot of big data to know okay, when their customers are happy or not. Also, you can do things like social media analysis or like sponsored ad analysis, like or something sometimes you can do things like BigQuery itself. So companies now they want to know things like they want to do things like sentiment analysis now. You get thousands and thousands of data you want to analyze it so it helps cost it helps companies improve on their customer services so that's one of the advantages of big data also have early identification of risks of products so you can easily you can easily identify risks or future risks using big data in a sense okay better operational efficiency so this is another use of big data itself for better operational efficiency so in terms of big data in excel now that's where it comes in because usually excel wasn't made for big data. It was also made for quick analysis, for spreadsheet purpose, for analysis, for pivots, for so many things, but it wasn't really made for big data itself. So Excel has a limitation. So the limitation of Excel is it can only accommodate 1 million and 48,000 rows and also 16,384 columns. So anything above that, Excel can accommodate it. So this is the, so for each sheet in Excel, it has the maximum capacity of one million rows. So anything above that, it can't accept it. And also for the columns, also sixteen thousand plus columns. So with time, when, as time went on, so Microsoft developed something called the Power Pivot. So the Power Pivot is what we use for big data in Excel. So the concept of Power Pivot is Power Pivot is a data modeling technology that allows you to create models. So if you're creating models, it allows you to create models, right? Also, it helps you to establish relationships. So when you talk about relationship, you talk about joining both your fact table and your dimensional table. Like there's something that's to connect. So you have your primary key and your secondary key, your primary key and your, sorry, your primary key and your foreign key. So those are what creates the relationship. Also, you also create calculation. So the calculations usually in Power Pivot are called the DAX. So some of you that use that use Power BI a lot, you know they call DAX, right? So all of this is what Power Pivot can do. So it helps you create, it gives you a data, better data model, helps you create relationship and also do some calculation. With Power Pivot, you can work with large data, build extensive relationship, create complex and simple calculation, all in high performance environment and also within a familiar environment, which is Excel. Yeah, so all of this can be done if you're someone that you don't really like using Power BI itself. You like using, you're still comfortable around Excel. That's where the beauty of Power Pivot comes in. It helps you do all of this, all the old big data analysis, all the old concept, all your complexity of data itself. It can be done in Excel itself. So Power Pivot is one of the three data analysis tools available in Excel. So Excel has three main data analysis tools, right? So number one is the Power Pivot, which I already explained. It's used for data modeling, also establishing relationships, also calculating and creating calculation. And those calculations are called DAX. 
So that stands for analytic as um, data analysis expression, right? So some of the data analysis tool in Excel, we have the Power Pivot, which is one. We also have the Power Query. So the Power Query is used for the, is more for your data transformation or your data cleaning. How you get data for some of you that are in, for some of you that are very used to Power BI a lot. You do a lot of Power Query when you are transforming your data. So also that can also be done in your Excel itself. You can also transform data. You can clean data. You can transform. You can pivot. Do so many data transformation. Most of them they call it ETL, right? Extra transform and low. So you can do a lot of transformation processes in Power Query. Also, you also have your Power your sorry, your Power View. So Power View is more like a powerful kind of um, visualization in Excel itself. So the next question you ask ourselves now is how do you get Power Pivot in Excel, right? So Power Pivot is actually an add-in in Excel. So it's actually available as an add-in in Excel, which can be enabled by just following some very basic steps. So I'll show you the step of enabling your Power Pivot in Excel. So the first thing you have to do, if you open your Excel environment, that's your Excel worksheet, your blank worksheet. The first thing you have to do, just go to your file. From your file, you go to options. From options, you go to from file, we go to options. From option, you can see I'm in general, right? You can see I have general, I have formula, I have data, I have profane, so many things. But what I need now is add-in because Power Pivot is an add-in in Excel. It doesn't come as the normal default environment. It has to be like an add-in, an external add-in. So if you go to your add-in, it will show you this place here, right? It show you view and manage Microsoft Office add-ins, right? So you have to scroll down to where you see manage. You can see manage over here, right? It's showing Excel add-ins. No, I will change it to from here, I'll go for, I'll click on this drop down. You'll select comms add-ins. Then you can see it's showing comms add -ins. I'll just click on what go. So it's going to put the comms add-ins environment for me. And you can see I have different add-ins. Yeah, I have um, that two ribbon. This one is more for um, Arrow. That's Arrow in Python. Sorry, Arrow in Excel. I have the Dark Studio add-ins, which I use a lot for um, Dark Studio. So if you want to like check if my Dark formula is well arranged, I use it a lot. I have the Inquire. Which I've also checked. Inquire is more for um, reconciliation purpose. You are trying to compare between two sheets. We are doing a reconciliation. Use a lot of Inquire a lot. So I have the Microsoft Streamer. So they taught us, they showed us Microsoft Streamer last week, which is used for embedded system. That's why I use more, use more of Microsoft Streamer for hardware. That's why you are integrating both hardware with Excel together. When you have the licenses like IoT, you have sensors, you are reading data real time. So use a lot of Microsoft Streamer. But for this section, I'll be using my Microsoft Power Pivot. Which is over here. See, I've already checked it, right? Yeah, you check your Microsoft Power Pivot and you click on what? OK. So when you click on OK, you will notice that a Microsoft when you click on OK, you notice that a, a, the, from your ribbon section, the Microsoft Pivot is now showing here. You can see Microsoft Pivot is now showing here. When you see Microsoft, when you click on Microsoft Pivot here, you can notice that it has manage, measure, KPI, add model, detect, and settings, right? And if I want to do some further stuff, you can also go to Microsoft documentation on Power Pivot. So I, I will drop the link. I will just click on it. It's open a link for me. Let's just click verification. It's going to open a link for me. So I'll copy the link and send it to the group now. So you can read more Microsoft Power Pivot. So I'll copy this. I'll paste it to the charts. I mean, let's paste it here. So if you can go, you can learn more. Okay, so hands is up. Um, FACA. Okay, let me promote FACA. Um, so FACA, I'll make you. Um, so FACA has a problem. Hello, FACA, you can unmute yourself. So I'm unmute myself. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Can so, you hear me guys? I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, man. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. So um, uh, this is my first time in this meeting. This is my first time to be in this meeting. I've actually been looking for a way to get into this meeting, but I don't know why. I think it has to do with the time differences or something like that. Okay, okay. so um, uh, from what you were saying earlier now, so um, uh, Power BI, Power Query, and Power View. Now, these are strong um, tools as, that we are going to be needing as a data analyst. Thank you, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, Maybe, uh, can you just give me a section? Let me just, can you just give me, I'll answer all your questions at the end of the section because I have a lot, a lot of things to cover. Can you just give me like for the end of the section? You just take like, down your question. Right. I can put it on the chat box. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, okay, thank you. So, now I've done all of this, right? 
So you can see if you want to know more about the empower people, you can come to the Microsoft documentation. I've already put it in the chat box. I read more about the Microsoft documentation about the Power Pivot, Power Query, Power View. These are all the information about it. So let's now start our work for today. So I'm in mean my Excel, right? So let me get data now. I want to start my own getting data. So the, the way I will do this, I'll go to my data tab. So I have three data, but I can't share the data because the data is actually kind of big. So I don't know if we need to download the data for this section, but since this section is recorded, I also give a link to where you download the data after the session on our YouTube channel. But for because this session, um, the data is kind of big. I don't know if we have to download the data right now. So let me just, just watch me as I'm doing it. So I go to my data tab. I go to get data. I'll get from a file. I'll click on Excel. So I'll get an Excel file now. It's going to load. OK, so I have to go to the directory of where I have my data. Just give me a minute. So big data I'll use. So the data I'll use is called sales data. So where's sales data? Sales data, okay, this. Um, so no, sorry, this is sales target. So it's sales data, yeah, this one. I'll use the bigger one. I'll click on imports, right? It's created the connection. So this place here, yeah, this, this is your first step. They call this place the Power Query Navigator, right? Just, this place is just more for like your preview. So if I click on my sales data, it's giving me a preview of the data, right? So from this place here, yeah, I have three options. I have load. So if I load this, it's going to load directly to my Excel sheet, right? I have transform. Transform now takes me to a Power Query editor and I have cancel. So I want to edit it. I want to do some cleaning. So data transformation is also known as data cleaning. I'm trying to clean my data. So I'll click on transform data, right? So it's going to open the Power Query Editor for me. So this is Power Query Editor. So it has some different steps. So for Power Query Editor, you cannot undo steps. So it has a place called Apply Step. For some of you that use a lot of macro, you know macros basically record steps, right? So also Power Query does the same thing. It also records each of your steps. So the first thing I would do, if you notice from this data set here, you notice that the first row contains each header. You can see that transaction ID, date, branch, pizza, unit price, quantity. They're meant to be as the header, not the first row. You can see the first row is showing what pizza, pizza international sales transaction. That's more like an, a more like a design. You can see the the second header is showing the second header is showing column two, column three, which is wrong. I have to make my first row my header. So there's a there's a function in Power Query called use first row as header. So this is a Power Query interface. You have your home tab, the way you're normal Excel, you have the home tab, you have your transform, you have your, you have your add column, you have your view. But first, now I'll go to my home tab. I want to make my first row my header, right? You can see there's an option here called use first row as header. You can see it, let me just, this option is here, yeah, shows here, use, shows use first row as header. So I'll just click on that. I'll use my first row as my header. If you notice now, you can see that I showed what promote, promoted header. Now it has made the first rule my header, right? And you can see the first rule showing transaction ID in O number is okay. At the same time, showing dates. You can see my date is shown as a calendar, as a date table. It's showing me as a date table, so which is also okay. My branch is showing me ABC. ABC means it's a text, which is also okay. That's branch. So pizza, also this different kind of pizza. I have my pizza, chicken, belly, extravagance. It's shown as it's so a text, which is also okay. If I scroll to the left, I can see my unit price. My unit price is also showing as O number. It's also okay. I can make it O or decimal, but since it's only in O number, there's no decimal, so I can leave that as an O number. Likewise, quantity. Sales discount. I show you can see some sales guys show me as discounts, right? So show me in decimal place. So you show me if I you can see you can see my data type, show me as decimal. Can see if I click here, I can see my data type, decimal number, which is for my time now, my time is showing me in date and it's also showing me time. But I want it to be only time, right? So something I can do, I can only I can extract only the time from here. So if I click on this time here, I go to add column. You can see there's a place I showed that is showing time. If I click on this drop down, I say I want time only. I bought out the time only for me. So I can just do what I can just come here. I can delete this time. I can write, I can click on this time, right click, and I click on what remove column. I see it has removed. You can you show me a step, you show what column has been removed. I cannot drag this time, I can drag it back here, and I can say I'll rename this as what time. That's it. 
quite all right, right? If you notice now, you can see that column nine and column 10 and also column 11, they're all empty, they're all blank. So I can want to remove both the column nine, column 10, sorry, and column 11. I just click on column 10. So I click on column nine, I put mine on shift and I select column 11. And I, I can press the delete key for my key, my keyboard. I can also right click. So I'll press the delete key, delete. You notice that it's showing what, what? Remove columns. Quite all right. But most times we don't really use time. I don't want to use time for this analysis because I don't want it to start dragging. Because you no know, time, it has different circles. So it takes time to start and process and to make my system start dragging. So I'll, I'll remove time. But most times you can use your time. If you know your, your, your the, the analysis you want to do is dependable on time, you, de you depend a lot on time. But for this analysis, I don't want to use time. So I'll just remove this. I don't want my system to start dragging. I'll click on delete also. I can see everything now is okay now, right? I have my transaction ID, I have my date, I have my branch, pizza, unit price, quantity, and sales amount. So the next thing I just go to my home tab. After doing what I'll close and apply. But this time around, I won't just close and apply directly. I'll click on close and apply. You can see there's a drop down. I have close and apply. I also have close and apply to. So I'll click on close and apply to now. You can see showing close and apply. It's asking me now where did I want to close and apply to? I have a table. I can I can close and apply to a table. I can, I can close and apply to a pivot table report. I can also close and apply for to a pivot chart. I can create only a connection. And I can so what I'll do now, I'll set on create only connection. So I don't want to load it directly to my Excel. I'll just create a connection to my Power Query. And I click on what add this data to my data model. That's it. So I click, I click done. Create a connection. I also click done. Add this data to my data model. You can see the two. Why I click add this data to my data model? I want it to be added to my power pivot model. You get so my power pivot is actually a model, right? You can, when I said the use of power pivot, you use to create model, create relationship, and also do calculations, right? So when you have added your power pivot to your Excel, this option will always come out, right? So like I click on add this data to my data model. I also click on create only as a connection. I click on what? Okay. So I'll just give it a second. It's going to load. It might take a little bit of time. It's going to load. So it's loading all the rows for me. Let me check. I can see some people's hands are up. Okay. Let's just continue. So I'll just give you some little bit of time. It's loading. That's the beauty about um, big data because big data itself, if you roll it directly on your Excel, it, your Excel starts cutting or it starts hanging. But for the power pivot, it just makes everything seamless and easy. So it has loaded, right? So I've done the first one. So I want to create, get another data again. So I'll go the same way I did the first one. Get, go to data tab, get data from a file, also from Excel workbook. This time around, I'll get my sales target now. I'll look for sales targets. Okay, I'm coming. My sales target. Okay, sales target large, okay. Because I see my sales target, I click my sales target, I click on import again. I'll repeat the same process for just two more steps. For two more steps. So my this is my power query navigator. It gives me a preview of my data, right? So I select my sales data. I have my load. Remember, I have load, I also have transform, I also have cancel. I'll click on transform. So transform basically means I'm trying to clean my data. They call it data transformation. That's cleaning of data itself. So I have my, my sales data, right? If you notice this now. My, I have my year now, I have 2018 year, but the many ones that is showing no, 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 no. If I click on this drop down, I have what I have three, I have four options. I have none, I have 2018, 2019, 2020, right? But what I want to do now, I want all these years here, this one I showing 20, no, 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 they're meant to be showing 20, 2018, right? So what I need to do, there's an option in, in Excel or in Power Query, sorry, there's an option in Power Query called Fill Down. So I have to fill down. What I do now, I come here, I right click, I go to my year header, I right click right, I go to fill down. Can see my fill option? Can see fill. I fill up, fill down. I will select fill down. So it's automatically, it's automatically going to fill all the information down for me. So it's filling all the years. So if I click on this filter sign again, you can see that the null is no longer showing. I'll do. I'll repeat the same process also for my data table. You can see these are different scenarios you might have when you're cleaning your data using the Power Query. 
So, because most times when situations like this happen, it's either they merged some cells, and if you merge the cell in Excel, it's only going to take the first column, the first cell is going to be written as a, as a value, the rest will be shown no, that's empty. So if I come here again, my date table, I'll right click again, I'll go to fill, I'll go to fill down. It's going to fill everything down again. So you can see now I have my what's here, I have my dates, I have my branch. Now the next, you can see the next column is showing what? Barbecue chicken, showing barbecue Philip steak, it's also showing beef suya, chicken belly and rice. But it's not really, make, if I want to do my analysis from this, it will, it will be very, very difficult for me because of what about the situation I want to pick some certain products with their values. But that is going to be hard because of what I have each, each product as what? Column header. So what do you think I can do for to this? Let me check. Do you, do you everybody know what I can do to this? So I have my each, each column now. Each each product now is in the column now. I have my barbecue chicken steak. I have my barbecue Phillips. I have my beef suya. I have my chicken belly. I have my chicken feet. So what do you think I can do to this? Because I want a situation where I want all the products to be in just one single column and the value, the monetary value should be beside. Right? So let me ask, what do you think I can do to this? Let me check the ch chart. Any answer? Kill down. Someone said transpose. Uh, no. Um, Power Query is available in Mac, but it depends. So there's a video Michael did on Power Query in Mac. I will share it with you later. Um, you can't transpose this. So there's something they call on pivot column. But your first one was correct, Alabi. Your first one was correct. You feel down. You are absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But if you transpose, it's going to be hard for this. You can you can't transpose it. What I need to do, I need to on pivot column. So uh, what on pivot does is, but for if you are transposing, I'm just changing the position. But for on pivot, it makes all the columns. It converts all my column header to a single row. It also converts the values in it to also another single. Sorry, it converts all my column header to a single column. Also, calling about all the values, so I'm not at all a single column itself. So what I need to do now, I select from barbecue chicken, I put my hand on shift, I select shift, I hold the shift key, I drag to the last product now. So the last product is what? Veggie Supreme, right? So that's all. I right click and I go to what? On pivot column. So that's on pivot for me, right? So this is column 20 and this is your busage limited. I don't need this, so I just click on what? Delete key. So I've got my attribute section as attribute and what values. So I can rename my attribute as what product. Product. I could rename my my value as what amount. Let's say amount sold. Amount sold. Pool. So the same thing again. I go to home. Load to. I say close and load to. I want to load to as only a connection. I'll add it to the model and I click on what. Okay. It's going to load. Okay, awesome. It has loaded already. So I'll do the another one. I'll do the last one. I go to my data tab, get data from file. I get from an Excel file this time around. So the next one now should be branch. I want to get branch data. Let me just get my branch data. Uh, branch, 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 branch. Here, I see my branch data. Import. So I select my branch data. You can see, show me the preview. I go to transform data. I give it a second. It's opening. So for me now, what else to do? I can see this data is actually clean. There's no issue with it. My branches, usually long and latitude, a manager, long and latitude is in decimal. Everything is okay, it's very, very okay, right? So what I was to do, do now just to close and load to. So go to close and load to. Only a connection, add to my data model. Okay, and that's all. So the next step now, I have to go now to my power pivot. You know when you, if you, in um, in the old data, in big data process, the first thing is what? You get your data, that's you extract your data. You call it data import, you import your data, right? The next step, now you have to clean your data. That's where your data transformation comes in, right? After you cross clean and you've loaded your data, the next step you have to do now, you have to create a model, right? So these are the different steps in data, in, in most of the call it in the steps in Power BI actually. So after you've loaded your data, the next step is not to create a model. So model is also creating a relationship, right? So I'm creating different relationship of my data. 
right? After I've created my data, I can do some DAX functions, some DAX formulas. So what I need to do now, from here, I'll, I created a new sheet. Let's say, let's say model. Let's name it as model, right? So what I need to do now is, I go to my power pivot. I see my power pivot here, right? I go to my manage, right? I click on manage. It's going to open my, so I'm it now. It's going to open my power pivot view for me. You guys see those three things I cleaned in my power query now, they're now in my power pivot. Because I, I, when, I, when I was closing my load, I clicked on what, add to a model. So the model I added to was my power pivot. So that's added to my power pivot model. So you can see the three data, my sales data, I have my sales targets, I also have my branch data, right? So from the sales data, if you notice something now, I want to, you show me, you can see the same way with most Excel, with most Microsoft tools, you have your home. It's always, it's, always, it's always necessary you have your home. I also have another tab called my design tab, where you do some designs. I also have another tab called my advanced, right? But this time I will stay in my home. I don't go to advance and design because that one is more complex. Let's just stay at home. I'm at home, right? So from home now, what I want to do now is, I mean, my data view, right? I also have another view called diagram view. So if I click on diagram view, it's going to show me the old diagram, right? You can see it show me as a table format, right? So I have my, I have my sales data, I have my branch data, I also have my sales target, right? I have noticed from these three data, what do you think is common? What is common in these three data is your branch. I have my branch data here. I also have my branch data here. I also have my branch data and my sales target. So my sales target, my branch data, and my sales data, all three as branch, right? So what I want to do now is also create a relationship between the three data, right? So the first thing I do, I go to my sales data, I drag, watch this now. I drag for my branch over here. I drag it and I drop it as was branch in my branch data. So I'm trying to create a relationship now. It's going to take a little bit of time to load. It's creating a relationship. Now it has loaded. So if you notice from here now, if you notice this now, this side here, you show me two options. You can see it show me a star. And show me what one. So what this means is that it, show, it, it means what is what? It's a many to one relationship, right? So I have many branches coming out. Like I can have like Ibadon, 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 um, Lekki, 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 like in many places. You get so for the branch data is shown in many formats, like the Ibadon, Ibadon might come out in many times, but for that one, it means that it's coming, it's showing only one. So that's showing many to one relationship, right? Many to one as a single filter, cross filter as a single cross filter. That means only one directional filter. The same thing again, I will drag my branch data from my branch table and I'll put it to my sales target branch. I'll drop it over here. It's going to create a relationship for me also. I see, you should see what many to one relationship, right? So I have just one unique branches for me. I stream many times in my sales target. That's just how it works, right? So this is the diagram view. I also have my data view. You can see from data view, data just shows you the like a spreadsheet of it. And also your diagram which shows you like a table format. This is where you create your relationship, your model form. So let me go back to my data view now. So in my data view, if you notice something now, I told you about um, DAX, right? After you've done your data modeling, that's you're creating, you have created a relationship. You need to do some calculations. So the calculations in Power Pivot is called DAX. So they call it data analytics expression, right? Data analysis expression. So it's more like, like if you are very used to um, Excel online, uh, sorry, Excel, Excel, they call it Excel formulas. So for Power Pivot, you call it DAX. So if you're very good with Excel formulas, it will be very, very easy for you to navigate in DAX. It's not gonna be something complex or something extraordinary. It's gonna be a straightforward thing, just very, very simple. So the first thing to do, and most times, whenever we, whenever you're doing, you're going to Power, like things are going to Power BI, all of this, your Power BI, it, it contains your Power Query. Power Query was firstly from Excel. 
That's why you do your old data transformation and everything. Also, when I do your data modeling and everything, your data modeling, creating relationship and the rest, it's also gotten from your pivot, your power pivot, which was also firstly gotten from Excel. So I tell people, if you're very, very good at Excel, it's very good, it doesn't be very easy for you to navigate in tools like Power BI. Power BI will be like a walkover for you. So let's say, for instance, now I have my unit price. I say I have unit price here. I also have quantity and I have discount. I want to do a calculation that if to, from to get the total amount, you remember total get total amount, you say what? I say price, price times what quantity, right? Price times quantity. So this is how you get your what? Total amount sold. But this time around, we have discounts in it. So how do you now calculate for discounts? Because there are discounts, the sales discount. Also, you now say what? Times, open brackets, one minus the what? This sales discount. Sales discount, close the bracket. So this one stands for what? 100%. So the one here stands for what? 100%. You get a logic, right? So let's not start. So if I say I want to get now my amount sold, I click on my add column. The same way you, if you are very if people, people that use like, um, Power BI to a lot, the same way you write your DAX formula, the same way you write your DAX formulas also in Power Pivot. You start with what equals to right? Equals to what? I say um, the first one is unit price. So that's unit price, sales data unit price times what? Quantity, right? Quantity, okay? Times open bracket one minus what? Sales discount. That sales discount. Sales discount. Tab. Close my bracket and what? Enter. So this is. Let me check if there's any question in the group. Yeah, you on pivot on, on pivot column. It's called on pivot column. Oyeka, it's called um. Oyeka, it's called on pivot column. Okay. So as this is done, I can rename my disk, my you can show it as what calculated column. I can rename this to what amount sold, right? And that's all. So now I have my sorry, I have my what sales data, I have my sales target, I have my branch data. You can also do other things like you can also create calendar table also, but I don't want to waste time with all of that because of time and everything. You can also add a column to this, like the way you add column. That's the same way I did uh, add columns. Add columns using this function here. Yeah. I do so many things: calculated options, create a relationship, manage relationship. The way you manage relationship in um, Power BI, manage relationship, table properties, mark. Like when you have a data that's a calendar table, now you can always mark a particular date as a calendar table. So you don't be creating things like hierarchy and the rest in it. So after this, the next thing I need to do now is. Now do some few analysis with this now, right? Because I have my sales data, I have my sales target, I have my branch data. So most times the problem about um, the big data itself is that it's very it's, it's not advisable to load it directly to your Excel background because now it's it's on top. Your power pivot is on top of your Excel itself. It's not at the background. So what I need to do now is just go to my pivot table here, right? I click on pivot table. So if I click on pivot table, it's going to take everything. To a pivot table. I know I'm working on pivot table. You can either click on new worksheet or existing. So I'll use an existing worksheet. So you can see the location model. It's showing what cell A1. That's cell A1 is the cell. I also can what? Okay. So it was loaded, right? So you can see now it's showing me the two, the three databases I collected, the three data um, model for I collected the right time. It's showing me my what? branch data. It's also showing me what my sales data. It's also showing me what sales target. If I open this, you can see all the, the branch data. I have my branch, my longitude, latitude, and managers, right? The same way, the same way you use your normal pivot table in Excel. That's the same way it's, it's working here. But now this one is, is working for a what big data. It's working for big data itself. So likewise, sales data, it has sales transaction dates, branch, pizza sold, unit price, quantity, sales discount, amount sold, right? Also, my sales target also the same place. So let's not say let's do some few 
um, should I say I want to get my okay, my product now, my pizza sold. I take my pizza sold to roll, and I start to know pizza sold against amount sold, right? I click on amount sold. If I click here, if I drag it to values, it will come out as value. But let's say, let me make this. I can make this a naira sign. So if I click on this amount sold, let me rename this amount sold. Well, amount sold from here. I want to make this. Okay. Okay. Can't change. I've already, I've already loaded it already. Let me make this. Let me change it to a currency first. Let me check the Naira. If it doesn't work, I'm just going to change it back from you. Okay. It's working. So let me go back to my table. Yeah. Show Naira Naira. So I can let me rename this now. Amount sold. So it's showing as Naira, right? I can also, and the cool thing about people table, I don't need to select, if you are working in Excel now, you'd have selected all, right? So now remove the number of decimal places, but I don't, you don't really need that in people table, just, okay, sorry. Select all, sorry. I said, you select all, you remove the decimal places, right? So I don't want the grand total to show, right? I select the piece at my pivot table, right? I go to my pivot table design. I go to grand total, I remove off all row. I have the grand total, okay. So let me not create a visualization from this. Let's create a visualization from this. I say, I select any part of the data. I go to pivot data analyze. I go to pivot charts. Let's create just random data. I'm not really crazy. It's not, it's, we're not doing data visualization. It's more like showing how to use the big data itself in, in Excel. So you can see this came out right. I can I can remove the filter button. I can right click, hide off filter button right. I can also if I want to bring the filter button to design. So so if I table analyze, I can see few, few buttons. I can it can come back. I can remove it right. So about if I want to do um. Other things, let me copy this. Sorry, escape. Let me call select all of this. Copy. Let me scroll down. Paste this again. Let me scroll down. So let's say this time around, let me use amounts. Let me use based on location. Let me remove the pizza. So let me say I want to do based on branch now. For branch now, I just add branch here. I see branch came out right, and I can say how to get pizza, pizza chart. Let me so use a pie chart, a ring chart. You guys try, you can just, you are just like messing around with the data itself. So, I did a few buttons, right? So, this is how you can add your data label, everything, but it looks clumsy a little bit. So, let me just remove my legends, okay. So what about if I want to now create like things like location, like geographical location, like maps? So for, and it's on the disadvantage of creating maps in pivot table is that it's very hard for you to create, it's, you, it, pivot table doesn't allow you to create map. You have to like copy the map and put it somewhere else. But usually that's not usually dynamic. So you can you use, you have to use like a reference. So most times that is the offset. So let me say, I come here, right? I click on equals to offset, right? So offset is one of the referencing, Formulas in Excel offset, offset, offset has three options, right? The first option is your what reference, second is your row, third is your column, your height and width are usually the options, right? So let me go back. So offset, let me just select on top of the header, comma. So my row, I want it to be one, two, three. I'm sorry, row one, two, three, it should be two, comma. Column wants to be the same column, so I'll put zero, close bracket, enter. So show me back at that, right? I can drag one, two, three, four, five. And I just say five, one, two, three, four. So five, sorry, five. I can bring out the values coming out, right? I can just copy the formats here. I'm not, I'm not really doing too much design. I'm just trying to show you some of the abilities. So with this now, I can create a map from this. So if I come here, if I say, um, I go to my. Okay, I go to insert now. Let me insert a map from this map. Okay, showing it's giving me an error sign. Showing map work. Okay, 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 okay. So because of 
the map in Excel is not that strong. Like that. why just Power BI to have brought out the location. So if I change this now, what if I change this map, this location now to if I main this let's say if I let me name this Lagos. If I name this Lagos Ibadan. If I name this Eki Ekiti, I name this Abuja. I name this Kano, um, Ibadan. Let me name Ibadan as Soko. Soko. So, you can see now. And the cool thing about you know, what I talked about references, I've already this reference is is this referencing this. So as I'm changing this, it's also changing. You can see now the map will pop out now. It's just about network now. So it, it has to do network connection. So the map is coming out now. So this was just network. I think my network is not that good, but it should come out. It's not, it's not like giving me the error sign anymore. So this is how you just work with. So the, now, okay, now you can see it's coming out now. Awesome. So let's give it a second. It's coming out now. To give you all the values now. Okay, awesome now. It's giving me all the values. The other time when I used um, Bagada, all those things, it's, it didn't really get it. Except I use things like power maps and the rest to bring it out. But since I'm using the normal map in Excel. So, as you show me Sokoto, right? You show me... Um, AKT, shame me Lagos, this should be Lagos, and this is okay. This Kano, it's not showing Abuja, right? That's interesting, but you get right. So, this is the whole concept behind this, right? So, this is how you you bring big, your big data, you take it to your Power Query. So, what we basically did today, we took big data, we took data which are big data, we took it to Power Query. What we are loading, we didn't load directly to our Excel, we loaded to a model and created a relationship. So relationship means it's just going to save you, it's just creating a relationship between, so the release of relationship tab here, right? Change your connections. I see the connection here. Change the query. It's just going to create a relationship with the Power Query. It's not loading directly, sorry. It's not loading directly to your Excel sheets. After that, when we added the model, we now went to our Power, Power Pivot, we now did some Modeling, that's what we did our connection. So you can modeling here is a power pivot. I see data modeling. As you show me data, you can see your diagram view. You can see the different kinds of relationship we created. We also created some calculations. That's we, we, they call it the DAX calculations. So this come calculation, which was done using DAX. So after that, we created a pivot table from this. From your pivot table, we added some little visualization. But since it's, well, I don't really base too much of visualization because, because of time and everything, I won't base too much on the visualization for now. So you can also add your slicers to this. And the cool thing about adding slicer, if I come to insert, sorry, insert slicer, okay, no, sorry. Click on this, sorry. Pivot chart, where's my slicer? Okay, yeah. Pivot chart slicer, if I click on slicer based on pizza, okay. I don't want to waste too much time on this. I'm just minimize this. And if I select different slides, I you see, right? You see all the values, right? Control select. The values keep changing. That's just the beauty of thing about it. So let me check. Let me check my report connection. You can see this. This is called report connection. I can also create, because now it is not controlling or I can click on report connection to the other one. So model one, module one. Now you can see that's affecting all now. So I reported connection. I said, let's select this. I see now everything is being connected. Everything is connected to each other. So I think that's all for today's session. So let me check the, um, the chat and see if there's any question. So I'll just stop sharing my screen now. I'll go to the chat. Any... So I'll stop sharing my screen. So any question? Okay. So any questions? So for NS, yeah, the recording we've made on our YouTube channel, so I'll send you the link to our YouTube channel. So the recording is going to be made on our YouTube channel. So just give me a second. So the YouTube channel. So all the recording will be made on our YouTube channel. We made available on our YouTube channel. So for NS. So for Alex and uh, Michael, your hands are up. So yeah, for next, the recording, I've already posted the link for the recording. So just go there by this time tomorrow, the recording will make. How do you load to Power Query? That's okay. I think I showed you. So if I go to, for my Excel, right? 
So for, okay, let me, let me share my screen again. For Ibrahim, let me share my screen again. Ah, uh, this I'm not, for NS now, for the maximum size of power query, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I've not really gotten to a limit. So most times, if I'm use, really doing big data, I use more of, I use more of um, Power BI to do big data. But for Power Pivot also has the ability, but now most times it depends on also your computer capability now, because you're not just doing only Power BI itself, like, sorry, only Power Pivot itself. Your computer also matters. Your computer has speed, but you can also check online. So for this, you can check online, just Google what is the maximum size Power Query you can accommodate. I, I can't really, I can't, because sometimes you can accommodate more, but I can't really give a specific answer to that. So for Ibrahim now, I want to show you how you load to Power Query. So let me share my screen again. So share my screen. So for Ibrahim, the first step, you go to data, right? From your data, you can see there's a place called get data. You click on get data. You see, so this has, option, has different options. It has get data from a file, from database, from, you can get from Azure. Another cool feature, you can also get data from Power BI. So you can get your data, your Power BI database. So let's say I want to get my data now. I have a work in my Power BI. I've done a work project in Power BI, right? I've operated that data project to Power BI service. I want to get the same data now to my from or let's say for instance, how to get a data now. Let's say I want to get um, get um data from from this my get data. I can see from from file. Let's say I get a CSV file now. CSV the means CSV stands for comma, comma separated values or text. If I click on CSV. There's a database called big data. If I select big data here, right? I set that big data. I click on what import. This is how you get data. From your for your power query. Now it has imported. Now you can see this data here, right? And I'll click on what transform data. So now this is your power query editor. Your power query editor is where your um, data transformation happens. This is where you do all your data cleaning, your data manipulation, everything else will also do with data cleaning. This is where you do it. You call it your power query editor. Sorry. So you can see now. This is my power query. I've already loaded, I've already brought my data down to my to the transform data path. So you can see I have my SN, that's serial number, pixel sold, price, quantity, amount, time, and time. So let me just delete these two. I remember I told you that all is recorded in your applied step. I've removed column now. So the column has been removed. So it's showing now if I click on, if I click back here, you can see that the column now is showing back. So if I delete a step, if I go back to remove the column, if I delete a, if I delete remove column. If you notice now that it is back, so if you're used to things like using macros, if you use a lot of macros, you know macros used to record step. The same way too in Power Query, you also record steps because Power Query you cannot undo a step. You can't press Control Z to undo a step, so you have to record each steps. So now I will remove the first two columns. So let's I remove the last two columns. That's by time and time range. I click on delete. I can see now remove column has been added, right? So I have home. But what I want to do, this data is a big data. I don't want to load it directly to my Excel sheets. I don't want to load it directly to my Excel sheet. I want to load it to a model. I go to load, close and load, right? I click on drop down. You can see close and load. You can also see, you can also see close and load to. I click on close and load to, right? So I'm showing, it, it's giving me four options. I can close and load to a table, close and load to a power, um, power pivot table report, pivot charts, that's I'm loading directly to a pivot chart. But this time around, I want to only create a connection with the Power Query. I want to create only a connection. I click on create a connection, right? So you can see this page wrote add to a model. And I click add it to a model. So I'm adding to the Power Pivot model itself. So when I click on add to a model, I'll click on what? OK. So it will, be, it will load this data for me. It's going to take a little bit of time. Let me just check the group if any question. Okay. Okay, Brian said thank you. Um, for Alex, Michael. Okay, Alex, your hand is off. Let me just promote you as a speaker so you can ask your question. So, Alex, I'll make you a speaker. So, Alex, Michael, you can ask your question. Let me see, check the chat. Alex, good, afternoon. good afternoon. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Alex. Yes. Um, my question goes this way. Um. I'm a DevOps engineer and I'm just getting into um, databases and um, data analysis. And this is my first class. And um, a lot of things are happening so fast. 
though I've gotten a whole lot too, because I didn't oh, sorry. know that. Uh, no, no, it's, it's an hour section, that's why. So, so I was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand perfectly. I understand very perfectly why things have to be that way. Um, and um, now this is where I'm actually going to. Um, I don't know if we are going to be treating Power BI as time goes on. And yeah, secondly, so we have we have another section by six for Power BI. So continue. Oh, okay. Then yeah, yeah. Is, thank you for thank you for opening my eyes to see that um, Excel actually does big data. I never knew that today I'm just I'm just getting to know that Excel actually does big data. So I think basically that's what I just have to ask. And um, lastly, okay. maybe I should just Thank also you. ask this, how can I actually combine databases with DevOps? Because uh, uh, how do you think? Can okay. I make, I don't want to make a transition, but I want to add okay. it to my, uh. Well, okay, for your DevOps, do you use Azure? Alex? Yes, yes, for your I DevOps, do. You... AWS okay. and Azure. Because oh, I'm a DevOps person, but I, I can link you up with someone on DevOps. I know someone that does DevOps very well, so I can link you up with the person. His name is um, is a, is a friend of mine on LinkedIn also. So I'll just give you my LinkedIn um contact, so you can just chat, you can message me on LinkedIn. Just give me a second. Okay. I really appreciate so I've sent this section for I've sent the I've sent a link for the next section, so you can message me on LinkedIn. Okay. I so you can that's my LinkedIn. So um, someone asked for um. Okay, let me just be checking the uh, comment section. I'm actually checking. So um, okay, I've asked Alex. Okay, for root now the um. Okay, so so I can want did something on Power Query using Mac. So let me just go to my YouTube channel. So I go to the company's YouTube, your business YouTube channel. Um, just give me a second. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll share, I'll share, I'll share the link before. Let me just share the link. So um, root, just go to your business. So Michael once did um. I don't use Mac. I use Windows. So but Michael once did Power Query using Mac. So, and also, so just, so just search the YouTube channel. There's a specific, specifically, a um, specific um playlist for that. So you just check it. You see it there. So Michael one did um Power Query using Mac, and it was awesome. So it has some functionality. So I shared the YouTube channel. So can it handle structured data? No, no, it can't handle structured data. You know, structured data are more like data from YouTube. What is the data that you know most times? Eh? The way Excel, the way um, Power Pivot was built, it was more for um, relational data. That's rational data, structural data, data that has both rows and columns. So when I do things like unstructured data, that's why you need things like Azure, um, all this Azure for Azure for big data analytics. I think there's, there's one called Azure Snippet or something like that. I've really forgotten the name. I'm not really into Azure. I do more of Power BI, Excel, and Power Automate. So there's some, I know that Azure handles unstructured data, but I don't think, I've not used it, it, I don't think it can because of the way Power Pivot was built. It's just for rows and columns, just for rows and columns. So I, I think I've answered Oyinka's Oyinkonsholas question. So I've sent you, so I've sent you the link. So we are going to be having a section also by by six. So let me just open the section. Let me share my screen so you see. So we are having a special guest by the name. Salif is also an MVP, Microsoft MVP. So we're taking us on the topic data joining using Power Query. I've shared everyone the link, so I'll just share you the direct link also again. So by six, by six p.m., we are having Kali take us a very special section. So I'll share the link. You can just click on that. This link, you just click on link and it and join by so joining. So you will see how you can do data joining also using Power Query. And it's going to be a very, very beautiful session. It's an MVP, a very, very awesome person. And it's also a Microsoft Power BI professional. So I thank you everyone for coming for this section and do have a lovely week ahead. And also have a lovely week ahead. So thanks everyone. So I'll stop my recording now and I'll also stop sharing my screen. So
let me add my Q&A. So if you have any question, you can also send your feedback. So add the feedback section. You can follow your business edge on our YouTube channel. Let me drop our YouTube channel and also our LinkedIn. I'll follow your business edge on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, you your, send your feedback, suggestion. If you have any suggestion or if you have any comments on how we can improve on this section for future purpose, you can also send your comments. Thank you, thank you. Um, you can also, for some of you that might be interested in training, so we also do Power BI training, we also do Excel training, we also do financial modeling training, we also do big data, we also do Python for data analysis. So we also do Python for data analysis training. So let me just send you, you, have, you can go to your business official website and check all the list of all the information you might be needed for the training. So these are awesome, these are we have awesome trainers. We have Michael is an MVP, a sometimes Microsoft MVP. I also have an awesome colleague, Ifine Benedict, Yeguara, who's also a data analyst, and also myself. So th thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And do have a lovely week. So join us by 6 p.m. We'll be having another awesome section on data join using Power Query. So thank you. I'll stop recording.